hello friends my name's Antonio and welcome to back at the ranch I'm gonna do a little walk around on the ranch golf cart here because some people have asked about it uh, especially when I'm on the road and uh, you know it's a very interesting looking golf cart to say the least it's rigged up for hunting it's rigged up for fishing I've got rod holders on it on both sides uh, we've got a little wooden bed back here so you can throw feed and other things which the tailgate does come down so if you need to put something bigger on there uh, you can um, the uh, tail lights just are regular running lights um, headlights just regular golf cart headlights but you'll notice that i do have this uh, bar on here as well so we use that for hunting rabbit at night in addition to that We've got two LEDs pointing this way. Another LED pointing to the back. This one right here is a yellow amber, so I can do stuff back here at night. And I've got two more spotlight LEDs on this side as well. So when we're driving, we can basically light up 180. So from everything here to over there is lit up so you can see rabbit and other things at night. But the thing that I get the most questions on is, hey, what's that thing on the top of your golf cart? <laughs> so first of all, we got a luggage rack up here, right? So it was a perfect fit. This came off of my Jeep. I took off the uh, regular cover that was on there and I just got this cinched down. Nothing fancy, you know, it's just for being out here. But on top of that, I got a solar panel. So that solar panel is a 200 watt, uh, eight amp, I think, let me, let me read that real quick so yeah that's that's the brand that i've got so 200 watt 8.2 amp 24 volt 28 volt um and i've got that hooked up to a mpp mppt mttp m solar charger <laughs> so i've got the solar charger on this side i believe i have on there that right there which is a genesun 4.6 volt it is waterproof that's one of the higher end ones um, since I use this outdoors I pretty much opted for a better one that's not only a charger by the way or a, a MPPT I think that's the right acronym but it's also a booster so I'm running a 36 volt system and it'll boat it'll boost up that 24 volt uh, panel uh, up to charge the uh, 36 volt system so let me show you how, how I've got it wired up. So I've got the uh, solar cables coming here, running along the edge, right? All the way down. And you notice I've got the cables for the lights here as well. Same thing on that side, got the cables running down. The lights in the front run under. And I've got them running in right here. Okay, so those then go down and go to the other side. All those come down to here, which is my switches. So you'll see on the other side. So those are all my light switches, right? The light switches are then hooked up to this fuse box, which all of this is off of Amazon, by the way. So that's uh, basically a 12 volt fuse box. Uh, and I use 10 amps or 20 amps, whatever I need to, need to put in there. And I have this, this switch right here to turn this inverter on and off so the lights don't work unless I flip that switch the inverter basically what it's doing is it's taking the 36 volt that's hooked up positive on this side negative on this side um, is stepping it down to a 12 volt so that I can run 12 volt lights and accessories on there you notice I also have a car lighter plug adapter which I have yet to use but it's there in case I ever need it and I thought about putting a uh, a power inverter maybe sticking it up over here in case I need a you know run a drill or something like that but I, I haven't done that really don't want to do it <clears throat> then I've got the PUP VW MHB batteries so those are lithium iron phosphate batteries 100 amp hour three of them got those off of, off of Amazon as well and uh, that is one of the things that I get a lot of questions on on my videos right so how how do those batteries work 
Um, let me put you in my steering, steering wheel here. <coughs> that way I, I don't have to hold you. And it'll be a more steady view. There we go. So how do those batteries work? By the way, it's really hot. You can't tell. It's a probably approaching 100 degrees already. So I'm gonna go sit in the shade in a minute and just drink some water. Um, but the batteries work, you know, really well for this golf cart. And I did do another brief uh, update on the batteries themselves. But the way I have them hooked up in series, which is the way they go in the golf cart, um, basically I get full power out of this golf cart until those batteries hit zero. And really they hit 10% then the BMS sensor pretty much shuts it off. Um, the reason for the BMS sensor basically is these lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, you really can't drain them all the way down to 0%. Uh, if you do, you risk damaging the batteries. So the solar panel pretty much always keeps a charge on there as long as there's sun, it's not super cloudy. Even if it's cloudy, it'll still charge, uh, but it doesn't charge at full capacity basically. Uh, so I can still uh, charge the batteries individually with 12 volt charger or I can hook up a 36 volt the same way I hook up um, a regular golf cart battery, uh, battery charger, excuse me. Um, the only thing is that when I use the solar panel or I use a 36 volt charger, the, the batteries won't charge evenly and really they don't, they don't drain evenly I've noticed um, because they've all got different capacities, right? Even though they're all manufactured exactly the same, they're not gonna be identical. They're not balanced to each other. So e each battery has, I wanna say it's four to six cells. I, I forget how many exactly it is, but those cells are balanced. It has a built-in balancer for each battery and we'll call the entire thing a battery, but the batteries don't balance to each other. So what I have found is that every now and then, uh, if I'm not gonna use the golf cart, I'll just disconnect the solar panel, disconnect the batteries, and I'll charge them up to full capacity using a 12 volt charger. Um, so back in January, we were out here, we did a, a four day camp, and uh, man, we used this golf cart a lot on those four days, and it was uh, cold, it was cloudy, it wasn't fully charging, we are using the 36 volt charger, and uh, one of those nights, uh, we had total blackout. In other words, my battery meter said that we still had about 30% charge, but it's, it's a cheapo battery meter that you have to program all the settings yourself. So I probably programmed it wrong. I really didn't have 30%. I probably had about 10% or less. And uh, we made it probably about half a mile away from camp and it just poof, shut off. One of those batteries just uh, got to the 10% shut off. So brought it back to camp, pushed it the next morning, hooked it up to a charger, started charging. Solar panel kicked in at that point, excuse me, the other way around. The solar panel was charging them. So the um, battery charger recognized that that was power and it started charging. So we got it back up to 50% according to the uh, battery meter and we we're running again, no problems. So fast forward uh, to the following week. Um, you know, I used the golf cart maybe once or twice again the following week then I parked it. Didn't use it from, I want to say, late January to about May. And uh, around May time frame, we're getting ready to head out to South Padre Island, which is the other place that I use this golf cart. I use it for fishing and getting around Isla Blanca Park, which if you haven't seen those videos, you can click on one of these right here. Click on this video here. Um, but it sat there. Uh, so I didn't check it. I didn't maintain the batteries, didn't charge them up. But the solar panel was still on. Unfortunately, I had it parked under a somewhat shaded area. So we get partial sun in the morning and then no sun in the afternoon, no direct sunlight. But I'd come check the battery meter and it would show it's charging. So I didn't worry too much about it. So in May, uh, we're getting ready to head out to the island, turned it on, backed it up, no problem, circled it around, getting ready to get up on the trailer. And it just, it shut off. It just clicked, shut off. I stopped, stepped on the, pedal again and it started moving then it stopped and start moving and stop and I was like well wait a minute something's not right and what it felt like to me was like the BMS sensor one of them was cutting off and then turning back on because the other batteries would give it charge so uh, I grabbed my voltmeter checked all the batteries and sure enough one of them only had like three four percent charge and the other ones were still 
uh, and not percentage really, uh, volts. It had like three volt charge to it and the other ones were about 12. So they weren't fully charged, but they, you know, they had enough charge to, to move the, the vehicle. So I disconnected everything, charged them up individually uh, with a charger that I had, a 12 volt charger. And two of them took charge, no problem. One of them looked like it was only hitting 80, 85%. And then the other one would hit like 10% or less. And it, it really wouldn't go anything above that. So checked them again, had basically the same readings. Uh, the one that had 3% now was giving me like 1%, 2%, and then it would drop. And when I say it would drop, I would just flick on a light. The light would turn on, it dropped to zero, and then it start flickering on and off because I had connected them all again. So I reached out to the uh, company that made these batteries through Amazon using their chat system and I explained what's going on. They asked me, you know, what charger are you using? I told them and they, they basically said, yeah, don't don't use that charger. That's a, a variable charger, meaning it has options for like, uh, I think it was five amps, 10 amps, 15 amps. And it works on multiple types of batteries, not only lithium, but lead acid and, and other types of batteries. They basically said, no, don't use that, use this other one. And they recommended uh, two different chargers that basically have fixed settings are only made for lithium iron, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. So ordered that, took a little while to come in. Uh, once it showed up, charged each battery up for two days uh, as recommended by the uh, manufacturer through, through the Amazon chat. And two of them charged up, um, got full 13 volts out of, of both of them. One of them hit 14, the other one was fluctuating between 13.2 and 14. Um, and they told me that that's normal to get fluctuating readings. But I hooked it up again, charged it, and then I got steady readings after that. The other one, no readings. So I sent them the information um, that they requested and they basically said, yeah, you know what? We're gonna send you a replacement. So even though the battery gave me issues within, I'd say probably about a year and three months that I had them, maybe a little bit, a uh, year, maybe a year and a month, I wanna say. Um, the manufacturer honored a warranty on it, which the warranty was not stated in the paperwork, was not stated on the website. Basically, they tell you it's under warranty or not. And they sent me a replacement. Uh, that replacement took about a week to come in. As soon as it showed up, plugged it to the uh, 12 volt charger, charged it up to 100%, charged up the other two to make sure that they were fully charged, reinstalled it, connected the solar, and we're moving again. So it works great when it works, you know, so we're not sure exactly what happened to that one battery. So would I recommend the batteries? I, I think I would. And even though I had issues with it, I would recommend it specifically based on the customer service that they provided and the fact that they honored the warranty and they got me running again you know i did ask them about the other one that was fluctuating they said that's normal uh, when you're using a, a voltmeter so they basically said if it gives you trouble just let us know uh, and hopefully i'm still under warranty if i have issues with that one but uh, i just drove around the entire property not the entire property but i would say Oh, maybe a good five miles. And uh, oh, something interesting I forgot to mention. So the old batteries, the ones that I originally ordered, did not have Bluetooth. Apparently Bluetooth is now standard in these batteries. So the new battery that I have has the Bluetooth and it'll give me the readings. So you'll notice that I've got 92% charge. Again, I drove about five miles with the solar panel hooked up. So that's, you know, helping feed uh, the system as well. But it says I've got 92% on that one battery, which leads me to believe that I should have about 92% on the other two as well. But it's telling me I've got 13.33 volts at, uh, it says that there's a positive three amp charge right now, which if I look at this real quick, yep. So 3.5 amps in is what I'm getting from the sun right now, which the app is telling me that. Uh, it's telling me, uh, it says power 40.26 watts. Not sure exactly what that is, but I'm guessing that's what's coming in. Uh, it gives me the high voltage, low voltage. Uh, then there's a voltage differential, which is a 0 0.001 volts. Uh, and the average volt is 3.33, which is the incoming because it's all positive. So it's basically telling me, hey, you've got this power coming in. 
and uh, it says one cycle index so it looks like it counts the cycles as well once it drops below uh, a certain um, charge it says estimated charge time two hours and 42 minutes so at the charge that the solar panel is giving me about two hours and I'll be back up to a hundred percent again and it says that I have remaining capacity 96.72 amp hours so again these are 100 amp hour batteries uh, combined it's 36 volt should give me 100 amp hours um, which when I did the math on the original install uh, running this golf cart the way it is on just asphalt smooth terrain no hills I was easily getting about um, I want to say about five miles to every five percent and I did the math and it was ended up being like 25 to, to 30 mile range assuming of course that I could drain the batteries completely so it's probably a little bit less than that but I get a lot more because the solar panel is throwing power into it so I pretty much get where I was going I drive two miles park it leave it for 20 minutes it's back up to a hundred percent and and it runs great so i definitely would recommend these batteries especially based on the fact that they are more affordable now when i bought them they were close to 300 dollars a piece uh that included of course shipping so shipping i think is like 30 bucks so i think it was 279 plus 30 dollars paid uh, about a thousand dollars for the three and right now they're running about 180 plus shipping so gosh almost a hundred dollars less uh, so you can basically get the set for about six to eight hundred dollars, I would say, because they do fluctuate in price uh, depending on specials and Amazon Prime days and stuff like that. So they work really well. I told the guys that uh, or I told the company that I was going to give them a review. Guys, this is your review. Great product. I love it. Uh, great customer service. And uh, I just hope I don't have any more issues with these batteries. So thanks, guys, for hanging out. And we'll see you next time. Back at the right.